What's going on, guys? It's Brian Jack with some men's comics, and we reached the end of the week once again. So you know what that means. It is time for last call. That's right, that final order cutoff show. We're giving you our picks for comics that are hitting final order cutoff this coming Monday night, August 3rd. Get those pre-orders in. Contact your LCS. These are the picks. These are what we like coming out in three weeks' time. But either way, we're going to get right into it, starting with, we've been talking about this series for a while now, video after video, people are starting to pick up on it. But we're talking about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, that ongoing series, issue number 108. That's right. This, to me, is the best uh, current ongoing series that I am reading. Um, when Ninja Turtles hits and hits well, um, it, it, it is like no other because everybody grew up with Ninja Turtles. So um the the immediate connection and nostalgia is there it just doesn't always sustain consistent constant readership beyond the like hardcore lifelong uh turtle fans um but every now and again we see these points where where people jump on and i, I think people got too accustomed to jumping off so they jumped off after uh they anticipated 100 kind of being the end of everything but as sophie campbell took over being both the writer and the artist um she brought in new characters, changed the the look of the book, changed the feel of the book. Uh, everything has bigger stakes now. Um, the the it, everything is different, and and so much is going on. You really kind of got to keep reading because each issue tells us more of the story, introduces us to new characters. We just got a new villain, the Slithery, um, and I think that this is definitely a series where even if we don't know anything about this issue first appearance or any reason you got to be paying attention to the series now because if you're reactionary to tmnt that's where these books dry up and you see the secondary market going crazy on 101 102 105 um i think that's going to be a consistent thing going forward yeah and you mentioned a big key term in there it's talking about reading we always say we always know we grow up with it reading is fundamental read the books guys we've seen people commenting issues past hey i think there's a new villain showing up uh bro already came out but either way we're still liking ninja turtles and we're liking 108 for final order cut off this monday so here we have a book we don't talk too much about this show we talk about all those other spider-verse books but we never talk about that amazing spider-man title that much but here's one to take note we're talking about amazing spider-man number 47 one this leads up to that monster 850 issue. So we always say, hey, always check before and after those monumental issues because you never know what might appear in them, right? That's right. And then there's also the buzz of the return of the Green Goblin. All of that has attention coming back to the Amazing Spider-Man series, a series that for a long time has really been overlooked by Marvel readers. I mean, we're talking Immortal Hulk, we're talking Venom, we're talking Thor, we're talking Strange Academy. Um, and I could honestly name five to seven more series that we're talking about more than we're talking about this one, but things are changing. So we're coming up here now on this big monumental legacy issue. Uh, it's got a lot of people excited. It's got reader attention and it's got retailer attention because now we're starting to see retailer exclusives popping up. Make sure you're heading to exclusivevariants.com uh, so you can get keep up to date on all of the various retailers dropping exclusives. But our channel sponsor, Frankie's Comics, has some absolute fire coming out. We've seen Ji Hyung Lee uh, do a Spider Gwen cover before. We know what, how the market reacts to it. And now we've got another gorgeous one here for ASM 47. Here we are heading over to Boom Studios for a minute, and we are talking about Mighty Morphin Power Rangers number 53. We just talked about how issue 52 was great. We're getting closer to that Monster 55 issue, but 53 has got some great stuff going on in it as well, right? That's right. If, if you're a big two reader and you don't like to read any of these licensed properties, um, if you could trust me on two series, I would tell you TMNT and MNPR. Um, these two series 
forget the properties that you knew as children. They have really grown, matured, um, developed. And this Power Ranger series has just been fantastic. I mean, catch you on the edge of your seat. So much going on. Nostalgia for the old, but so much new being brought in. Um, and it's like I said with the Ninja Turtles, stakes being raised. And this is an issue where we were supposed to be getting the first appearance of the Dark Rangers, these evil villains, similar to like the Dark Knight's Metal sort of feel. But they showed up already. They appeared already, but we're going to get them in all of their glory here. This is a highly anticipated issue. I think it'll be an amazing read. And it all leads up to that big landmark 55th issue that is the end of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers series. All leading up into splitting into two new series. Mighty Morphin with a brand new Mighty Morphin number one. And Power Rangers with a brand new Power Rangers number one. But yeah, exactly what Jack said. I was of that mindset also growing up. I kind of watched Power Rangers, but I couldn't stand like the campiness of it. All that's taken out of this book. I went back and started reading the comic book. Fantastic story. Like he said, it kind of touches on nostalgia, but takes the campy cheesiness out of it with great stories. And this Saturday, August 1st at 2 p.m. Eastern, we have pre-orders available for our brand new Power Rangers, Draken New Dawn, number one. Steve Morris variant limited to 500 copies. That's going to be available at supermanscomics.com as well as our channel partner, The 616 comics.com right that's right and this book exclusively debuted on burke's family 54 comics just the other day if you're not subscribed be sure to check them out and subscribe to their channel You often hear a lot of people talking right now about Thor and Venom with Donny Cates, but we've also talked on this channel how great his Guardians of the Galaxy run was. And here we are getting a hardcover edition of that, right? Absolutely. Now, this is, to me, the most slept on of all the Marvel series so far that Donny Cates has done. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really um, a different Guardians of the Galaxy feel than a lot of the other Guardians of the Galaxy series, which admittedly I haven't really connected with. Love the movies. Haven't really found a comic series that I had loved to this point, and uh, I really enjoyed Donny Cates's. I also have enjoyed Al Ewing's, but this was one of the things where I think a lot of people haven't checked this one out as much. The books didn't go to as late a prints. There wasn't the sexy first appearances that have been in some of the other series. So I think this is a great opportunity, Brian, because we talk about reading. We talk about, two saving money. One of the best ways to save money when you're, when you're ordering FOC is on trades. Uh, trades are reorderable. So stores, they don't tend to worry about, you know, oh, what if I sell out? So they'll give you a great discount if you pre-order a trade uh, before the FOC deadline. So if you didn't get a chance to read Guardians of the Galaxy, this is a great chance to add a nice hardcover book to your collection. Read it all in one shot. Um, I think it was 12 issues. And uh, yeah, also save a good amount of money by being able to reach out to your LCS um, and get that discount pre-FOC. Getting back over to IDW for a second with the classic tale and a great show on Netflix. We got that lock and key and battalions go number one of two issues, right? That's right. This is a brand new miniseries, but this is not one to be just overlooked as simply a miniseries because we've already got nuggets of information based on another announcement coming from IDW of an impending crossover with Lock and Key and Sandman. That's right. Sandman from Vertigo Comics in DC. Uh, there is a brand new crossover coming and it's going to be within this story that that story is set up, making the crossover with Sandman canon. This is not just some you know, weird thrown together crossover that we've seen IDW do with two properties from, say, DC Comics, Dark Horse, Boom. We've seen that. But they're doing this a little differently. They're bringing this in. And Brian, you and I were talking before we started recording about the fact that, you know, if you look at kind of the nuggets of information, both of those properties are going to have shows on Netflix. So you do never know what we could see in the future. This could be all by some grand design. Um, so a lot of people are very excited about the upcoming announcement with Sandman and Lock and Key. If you're excited about that, you should definitely be paying attention to this, especially if you're like a Sandman fan who's not necessarily a, walking, uh, a Lock and Key fan. 
this is a great way to kind of get into that story and lead into the story that you're waiting for. There's a one in 10 incentive and a one in 25 incentive. I think they'll be under ordered. They may even be slept on upon initial release, but could be sleepers down the road if that crossover series hits the way we expect it to. Yeah, especially you talk about that one in 25. Even the one in 10, a lot of people see a two-issue miniseries and be like, ah, I'm not going to get that. So, of course, it comes yeah. in a little bit under-ordered, and then those variants go for a little bit more money, especially if the story is that good and, like you said, leads into that Sandman. You mentioned both those shows on Netflix, but if you're on Amazon or you have an Audible account, they also have that Sandman audio version up there right now that's really great to listen to. And just use a credit or buy it, which either way, but it's up there on Amazon Audible. So that also leads us to that part of this show where we are talking about that indie showcase brought to you from Black Hate Comics. BlackHateComics.com, great place to get all these FOC orders and you can pre-order all the books we talk about in this show from BlackHateComics.com. But what they're known for is those great indie books. They always have great indie exclusives. That's why we have the indie showcase that's brought to you by Black Cape Comics. Dot com. And the first one we're talking about in the end of the showcase portion is that year zero number four. We talk about AWA Upshot on this channel before, especially for Last Call. These indie books, a lot of stores don't order them, but I'm pretty sure they're ordering this title because number one is taking off right now, right? That's right. But you know what? We've seen this pattern before, Brian, especially when it comes to these small press publishers. So with number one taking off, there's going to be added attention on number four. People are going to like, what is this series? What am I missing out on? What do I need to be paying attention to? So it's important to get those pre-orders in at blackcapecomics.com. And you can do that right now and save 15%. Here's probably my pick of the week just because of the reader perspective. And I love the creators. I love the story. I love the characters. And we are talking about Canto 2, Hollow Men number one. That's right. Now, listen, if this is the third time that I have come on this show and pitched this property, specifically with a number one issue. We did it initially when Canto first dropped. We told you we saw this as the next big Pixar property. We believed in it. Uh, we heard the pump and dump claims. And what happened? You're looking at the hottest creator-owned series IDW brought to the table in years. In my opinion, since Lock and Key. That's my opinion. You can add me. But at that point, we've seen everything that's happened after that. Print run issue going to late prints, hot convention exclusives, killing the back issue market. We fast forward all the way to the one shot. Brian, you and I are back right here in our very same spots, doing the same thing we do on Friday nights, right? Trying to let you guys know about what books we see that are really kind of primed to penetrate that secondary market that you can go ahead and get early. What books are absolutely going to have that reader buzz that you want to make sure if you want a reader copy that you get at that cover price so you're not paying those high-end secondary market prices. And we talked to you guys about the Canto One Stop. Same thing happened. Under-ordered. People slept on it. You got cover A selling for 8 to 10 bucks. You've got the 1 in 10 selling for 20 to 30. You've got the, the 1 in 25 at like 60. Um, You've got the San Diego Comic-Con variant over 100. It, it, it's a pattern that I think is going to continue because this is a property for all the right reasons. It has cultivated a fan base. Anyone who reads the book has the same reaction. They are blown away. People come in with a misconception that it's an all ages or that, um, well, it's a love story or, um, you know, it's not, it's, it's not my type of thing. To, you know, I'm, I like this type of book or that type of book. Canto, um, it, the, what makes it successful and why it connected with Brian and I is we felt like it was universal. It would connect with, in, with everyone in some way. Now we're here dropping another one. And we talk to you guys on this show all the time about IDW 1 in 10 incentives and those 1 in 25 incentives. And when they put that 1 in 25 on a book, they feel good about it. And it's something you should pay attention to. But do not sleep on that one in 10 Ben Bishop TMNT homage. I think that is a book 
that is going to connect with all kinds of fan bases. And then coming into the 125, that's a smash cover. That's absolutely a cover that I expect to be more than ratio. Do not sleep on this one. Do not wait. If you do, don't say we didn't warn you because this is three strikes you're out at this point. So we love Canto. We hope you guys do too. We know a lot of you do, but make sure you get those FOC orders in before Monday when that FOC cutoff hits at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Head to blackcapecomics.com. They've got these books up available for pre-order. Yeah, and the good thing is you're not at the mercy of IDW's website to get these. Just get them <laughs> those in That's to right. your LCS or online. Final order cutoffs Monday. They should be able to get them for you. That's definitely in. Like he said, that one in 10 incentive. The one in 25 is freaking awesome as well. But being yeah, Ninja Turtle fans, we definitely like the one in 10. And we like Ben Bishop. But So there's the picks. There's the picks for this week. But like we always do, we have some additional printings that are hitting final order cutoff as well. Right, Jack? That's right. And if this is the part of the show where usually you would then click off and ignore this and say, ah, it's late printing. And then they start asking later, like, hey, when's Thor hitting uh, second print FOC? Right. Don't do it this week. This is not the week to ignore. There are some releases. First off, we want to give a shout out again to Black Cape Comics and BlackCapeComics.com because there's two books they posted on Instagram that they've got on their FOC list that are definitely books you want to be alerted and paying attention to. We've got It Eats What Feeds It. Number one, the second print coming from Scout Comics. That was a very popular first print book upon release, as well as the uber popular No Heroin number one, second print coming from Source Point Press and Frank Vogel. That was a huge sellout, big secondary market success. Don't sleep on that one. The print run will be low. But that's not it, Brian. We're talking about a Mortal Hulk 35 second print. Okay. How about a Thor number two fourth print? Strange Academy number one third print. We've got Murder Hobo number one second print, another Scout Comics release, and Engine World number one second print. So a lot of great releases, definitely some back issue heaters, and some books that I think we're going to be talking about in the coming weeks. Yeah, so a lot of great books. Again, you can pre-order any of these books we've talked about over there at blackcapecomics.com. But if you're not going to go there, make sure you get them at your LCS or wherever you guys pre-order your books from before Monday night when that FOC hits because that's the purpose of the show. Get them in your hands before you're spending more money on the secondary market. Either way, guys, don't forget this weekend, Saturday, August 1st, 2 p.m. Eastern, you can get the pre-order for that. For that Power Rangers Draken New Dawn number one issue, Steve Morris exclusive Virgin variant, right? That is right. And they are going to go fast. So make sure you are heading to simplemanscomics.com and the 616comics.com. And I'll tell you a little secret right now, both sites, if you use Thanks 10, you can save 10%. And we got some great bundles up there as well. This is Brian Jack for Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.